<clears throat> well, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Ellathorpe with Justin Longevity Center. Um, ask the doctor anything. We are a group of uh, eight healthcare providers here in Tustin, California, Southern California. And we do functional integrative uh, complementary alternative medicine in addition to our standard of care allopathic uh, training, specialty training. We um, are interested in trying to provide a forum for anyone to ask us a question, to try and get the off the cuff thoughts of a functional doctor uh, regarding the various concerns and questions we have. Uh, we can't go in depth on any one question. We'll try and give um, direction and um, understanding how we would approach the general topic, but it's not meant to be individual uh, treatment or medical advice. This is a educational program. But these questions will serve as a good uh, point of reference for um, how functional medical doctors with a lot of experience uh, look at uh, various uh, symptoms and questions our patients have. So I have um, internet questions and then I have the live chat where if you're a member of uh, YouTube and you can sign in, you can type in a question. I see some are already being typed in. And what I defer to is the live, those who are actually watching, I will go ahead and look at their questions first, and then uh, we'll go to the uh, internet questions. So the first today is from um, Alisa. Uh, she says, hello, hello, thank you so much for your caring heart. Well, thank you, Alisa. Um, her question is, that she just had a mammogram and she had a lot of cysts, uh, breasts are glands and glands uh, can become cystic. Um, and she had some calcium um, uh, deposits. She asked, what causes this and how can I help it not happen? I already do everything you recommend for general health, uh, water, chelation, enzymes, and she goes on to say fasting, vitamins, juice plus, et cetera. Well, <clears throat> that would be a question um, you could ask anywhere. Why does arthritis occur with the bony calcium deposits around uh, the joints? Why does uh, calcium uh, deposits show up in your coronary arteries? Uh, why do we see calcium deposits in uh, CT exams of the abdomen or chest in the cartilage area uh, of the chest or fibroids or other parts of the um, intestine? And the answer is wherever inflammation is in the body, there will be uh, micro damage. And remember, we have this picture here. Let me go right here. The picture of this cell membrane with that little damage to the cell membrane right here. So you'll see that hole right there. Wherever that's hurt, then the cell has to be repaired at night and fixed so it looks like this. It's a double membrane phospholipid layer with fat and protein. Phospholipids are fats and the receptors are protein. And if you don't eat the right materials to do that, if you don't have enough water in your diet, uh, if you don't have good capillaries to reach those sites of injuries throughout your whole body and you have, you know, what they say, 50 trillion cells, then that area will become a constant site of irritation. And if the body doesn't see it fixed, it starts uh, depositing calcifications to kind of seal it down or cement it off in a, um, a healing reaction, you might say. So calcifications in the breast, um, the exact cause is not published uh, definitively. But microtrauma, so <clears throat> the breasts uh, get bumped um, in uh, sexual, marital, romantic encounters. There's a lot of uh, uh, micro damage to the breasts, and these can create little tiny inflammatory damages. Uh, sleeping on the breasts, uh, too tight of a bra, um, <clears throat> running and creating uh, shaking to the breast, uh, microtrauma, uh, various causes can do that from just those mechanical things. The other thing would be the world has toxins in it. There are heavy metal toxins. There are, um, uh, you know, organic chemicals like uh, P 
PCBs, uh, volatile organic uh, uh, phospho, uh, phosphorylated uh, uh, benzene rings. These things are toxins. Uh, then the micro damage of average high blood sugars. Uh, I would say the vast majority of Americans are becoming diabetic and obese. We have an obesity problem. And instead of drinking water, uh, we are going for uh, uh, sweetened flavored coffee, lattes, and juices, and diet sodas that mimic the sugar response uh, through the uh, neural vagal uh, response to the pancreas with insulin secretion, even though you're taking a diet drink. All these sugar um, micro responses uh, on the average with that sugar create tiny micro damages to these cell membranes like right here where that little hole is. So <clears throat> you have to understand, this is basically just showing aging and micro trauma to the breast. Now, does this really show a high prevalence of risk for cancer? <clears throat> well, trauma to the breast is a known uh, correlation with cancer. Uh, but microtrauma, I'm not so sure. Uh, <clears throat> fibrocystic breasts make it more difficult to see the uh, uh, breast tissue without um, hiding maybe a potential uh, mass. So they'll say fibrocystic breasts um, uh, could be a risk for uh, breast cancer, but not ne necessarily uh, causative. So um, we have to be honest. The uh, Department of Oncology, the research in oncology has uh, failed miserably. Uh, instead of uh, helping reduce cancer and finance research and healthy lifestyles that'll uh, reduce inflammation with natural uh, cost-free things like just telling you to eat less sugar and processed food and drink uh, more water, get a good night's sleep, uh, healthy exercise, um, <clears throat> Instead of working on those things, uh, our tax dollars are going into the vast majority of uh, um, money being uh, sent from uh, National Institutes of Health and sub-departments, uh, CDC. These research centers get their money keynoted uh, down lines of research that are just basically one-minded to make a uh, profit for a certain pharmaceutical industry with, uh, it's got to be some uh, chemical they can patent and manage. Uh, and so uh, no one's going to uh, send money of your tax dollars to do research on um, stopping things that cause inflammation. And we know chronic inflammation is associated with uh, all cancer. For instance, the smokers, would have that chronic inflammation in the lung, that chronic site of irritation and repeated stimulation for healing uh, then leads to the uh, <clears throat> uh, response of a uh, cell becoming um, undernourished, uh, lack of removal of waste, hypoxic, then the cell energy mechan mechanisms of the mitochondria break down and uh, it uh, diverts into a, uh, a embryonic uh, stage of life where it now goes back to the embryo where it has to grow uh, blood vessels to get its own blood vessels to uh, get rid of waste and receive nutrients. And so they're never going to look down those uh, areas that are over 100 years well known and yet are associated with the successes we see when people eat a low carb diet, a uh, very low key, uh, keto diet, uh, they have uh, many of these miraculous uh, cancer uh, turnarounds. Well, that improves the microcirculation. And if they're keto uh, or they do fasting, they tend to drink more water or do drink more water. They start exercising. Everything that improves the circulation to restore the uh, mitochondrial function uh, back to the normal um, uh, aerobic uh, metabolism of energy production in every cell in the hundreds of thousands of mitochondria in a cell. So <clears throat> if you take the nucleus 
of a cancerous cell and you put it into the uh, healthy identical uh, cell of the tissue, that uh, cell will remain fine. But if you take the uh, mitochondria of a cancerous cell and you put it into a healthy cell, uh, then the cell will become uh, cancerous. And uh, that is because can cancer really isn't a nuclear DNA phenomena, it's a metabolic uh, energy production uh, metabolism error. And that's from our sticky, gooey, clogged up uh, circulation. So don't worry about um, the microcalcifications. Um, what causes it? Um, there may be, you, you have to have more time doing more chelations, reducing heavy metals, maybe more high dose vitamin C to get rid of PCBs, more water. Um, I don't know what your fasting blood sugars are. Uh, when you see your doctor, please have a seat and make sure that they are very uh, healthy levels because a lot of us lie to ourselves uh, thinking that, well, the range says this is the normal range and I'm in it, but the ranges on the labs are uh, too tolerant for developing cardiovascular diabetic trends. Anyway, hopefully that's a long-winded answer, uh, Elisa. And uh, hopefully when you see your doctor and you can discuss that further, uh, that'll give you some idea uh, about the why and, and what to do. Carolyn asks, what would you recommend for dry eyes? I've heard of people using uh, manuka honey. Manuka honey. Uh, I haven't heard that. Um, here's what I'm going to say. All of us uh, de get withered, wrinkled, and dehydrated with aging. Menopause is associated with uh, getting a dry vaginal area, drier skin, thinner skin, thinning hair, wrinkles. Uh, the membranes of our nose and vagina uh, get thinner uh, and we get um, irritated vaginal areas. And the same happens with the cornea of the eyeball uh, and we make less fluid. So uh, if you don't work to drink enough water every day, if you don't have a personal game that you play to get yourself to drink that, uh, you will become chronically dehydrated. And these topical eye drops, restasis, things like that, um, are, are merely just uh, time gaps uh, uh, to give you a little momentary relief. Um, natural hormone replacement therapy using the estradiol helps a woman stay younger, longer, uh, more voluptuous, you might say, in the sense that her tissues don't thin as quickly. That means the eyes don't dry out as much. And there's vaginal lubrication, and, uh, and so it goes. Hormones are designed to repair our bodies as general contractors. So uh, it does a lot to go on some natural hormone bioidenticals. Uh, drink enough water. Uh, don't clog yourself up with a sticky, inflammatory uh, processed food, high-carb diet. Get a good night's sleep, um, things like that. So uh, <clears throat> that's the direction, Caroline, I would move towards getting on natural hormones. Um, Christina says, hello, Dr. Rita. What, would, what should I eat to get my good gut bacteria up? Well, a low-carb diet, number one. I am not sure how they multiply. I saw a video that probiotic supplements aren't good to take daily. Thank you. Well, uh, there's a lot of controversy because there's a lot of unknowns. And uh, medical doctors, uh, PhDs, uh, we like to look like uh, we know it all and that we have a great depth of knowledge. Uh, but the answer, sadly, is we don't. And the gut microbiome is only just now being uh, kind of like space is being explored. We are just now exploring really the gut microbiome because there's um, hundreds of thousands of family species of uh, bacteria, fungi, uh, and uh, aerobic, anaerobic um, uh, items that are living with us in the gut. You might say that there are more individual genetic types in your gut, uh, more DNA variants than in your own human body. And so um, you are really carrying around an entire population in your gut. 
and on your skin and so forth. So as they start discussing this, um, many gastroenterologists in the field of gastroenterology, family practice, internal medicine, um, everyone kind of laughed at this and, and uh, didn't pay it much of any attention until functional medical doctors uh, took uh, care to look into this because ancient um, Chinese medicine spent a lot of time discussing uh, uh, bowel movements, the quality of them. They didn't understand the cu culturing and the growth of them, but they knew that the diet impacted the health and you could tell a lot by looking at uh, bowel movements. So we are starting to see research on uh, many of these aspects of the microbiome types of species, uh, fauna, flora, whatever it is, uh, that uh, grows their bacteria and, and yeast and so. And we're getting a good idea about what probiotics are supportive and what probiotics may not be beneficial. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that I've seen any that would be reported as harmful. So I would say uh, you have to be cautious when you listen to a YouTube. If they don't explain the very early nature of the research and the very limited background and training, because uh, there really isn't any training in medical school on this uh, even still, uh, it's just now beginning to open up uh, to uh, gastroenterologists uh, regarding, for, for instance, fecal transplants. Uh, we're starting to see this as finally an accepted methodology of treating uh, Clostridium difficile uh, with giving healthy bowel transplants uh, into a person who has this terrible uh, bacterial overgrowth and often uh, deadly. And now it's about 90% turned around. And that's not with some chemical or antibiotic, it's with natural gut flora from healthy people. So until we get much more money flowing in this direction, get it out of the international crime syndicate of the pharmaceuticals and the paid off uh, research departments in our uh, universities, uh, we're gonna stay uh, behind the times and unfortunately a lot of people will be hurt. But we do know that a high carbohydrate prostate diet uh, aggravates and uh, is helpful uh, to uh, feed the bad guys, the bad bacteria and, and yeast, and uh, the low carb um, diets are beneficial uh, to all the good uh, probiotics. So we can agree on that. Uh, other nutrients like vitamin D are, are minerals. Other vitamins are produced and supported by good bacteria. Our neurotransmitters are supported and produced in, uh, in the gut as well. It's such a vast, vast field, just like this uh, outer space. You have to understand what goes on in the gut is truly um, amazing. So I, I can't agree that there's any one answer that this is uh, um, um, not good to take a probiotic. And I've been working with probiotics and on functional medicine closing on, I would say close to 40 years now. So I have never seen a problem with them. Let's see. Um, Essie says, where is the best place to rub testosterone gel on men? Thank you. Well, there isn't any one because we're all different. Uh, the thickness of men's skin, uh, the closeness of the blood vessels to the skin surface so that uh, it can be absorbed into the blood. Um, I tell men uh, to rub it on the thin scrotal sac. Uh, it is uh, uh, the best, quickest, fastest uh, uh, way to absorb it so they could put it on their actual scrotal sac um, or I would have them put it on the insides of their uh, wrists here where uh, they don't have a lot of hair there and uh, their blood vessels will be more on the surface. That's that's what I would uh, recommend. Christina says, what would cause a diabetic person to get cholesterol in their leg veins even though they take cholesterol medicine? Well, that's because cholesterol-lowering medicine has never solved the problem of uh, vascular um, damage, um, and uh, it is not the solution. Uh, there really is uh, poor, lousy research um, regarding any benefit. If it is, it's so marginal. Um, 
that it's uh, really a, a poor arguing point. There's as much bad uh, reporting on the impact of uh, cholesterol lowering drugs uh, as there is trying to push it. So um, I think cholesterol medicine uh, to reduce it is a um, another sad story in the science of uh, bought off uh, scientists, bought off physicians, uh, uh, and the improper influence of uh, pharmaceutical companies on medical school curriculum and training uh, to think that a cholesterol lowering drug is going to benefit anything. Uh, it has a margin, a tiny margin of benefit as a anti-inflammatory. Um, I would watch the video called um, High Cholesterol is Healthy uh, by Dr. Uh, Ken Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, and David Diamond. Uh, he's a PhD. One's a family doctor, the other's a PhD. And they review most of the recent literature uh, uh, retrospective meta-analysis looking at multiple studies on statins and cardiovascular risk reduction, and it's a joke. <clears throat> now, um, why, uh, when you're saying that this uh, uh, person has diabetes, well, we all know that diabetics have higher average blood sugars, and the more that molecule of sugar is built up in your blood, the more tiny micro damage is being done, let's see, yeah, to, to these uh, cell membranes right here on the cell membrane there. So micro damage all the time, 24 seven. So you've got to understand the body is designed to try and repair that membrane and that membrane must have cholesterol in it uh, to repair it because cholesterol helps with the uh, mobility and fluidity of the membrane, which is uh, critical for its function. So to try and lower cholesterol thinking you're doing something good is like saying, uh, you know, pouring uh, glasses of water uh, on a burning house is uh, uh, valuable. It's not, it, it would be absolutely ineffectual. So uh, cholesterol is not the problem. It's what's causing the inflammation and the diabetes is causing the cholesterol uh, to try and repair those micro damage sites in the leg. Uh, Dennis says, is postprandial somnolence a normal physiologic response? Well, I can see your cake, your donut, and your ice cream cone there. <laughs> for, for people who think that that is food rather than a toxic insult to the human body, it, the massive influx of sugar creates uh, alarm bells in the body insulin shoots up to try and get that blood sugar um, out after eating all those carbs and starches. And the blood actually gets uh, thicker like a blizzard. If you can imagine, you can't walk well uh, uh, if there's a blizzard going on. So if there's a blizzard of sugar after you're eating uh, these high carb foods like processed mashed potatoes and rice and beans and cereal and... Uh, uh, all these kind of things, that's going to create a, a, a blizzard impact. What that does then is um, the communication to all the body is diminished. So you can't uh, see to walk in a blizzard. You can't see signs as far ahead. And so communication and your vis visual sight is down. So too with your um, physiologic responses to stimuli diminished when you've just shot your blood uh, volume full of sugar sticky particles and then your brain uh, starts to go into uh, a state of uh, um, sleepiness, fatigue, drowsiness and sleep, uh, hoping that if your body can put you to sleep, you'll stop putting stuff in your mouth uh, to make it sugary and sweet. So uh, yes, is the answer. It's a normal physiological response. But it's very clear, especially after Thanksgiving, everyone gets tired because we all tend to have our treats on that special holiday. Tim says, hi, Dr. Rita, asking for a mom and a daughter about your recommendations for migraines. Mom is very healthy, 55, low carb, good hydration. Daughter, 22, both have tried multiple different medications and Botox. Oh, my God. Well, um, there is some um, uh, inflammatory trigger 
probably most likely from their diet. Um, they should find out their blood type. They should get a complete digestive stool analysis done by a functional doctor to look for inflammation, types of bacteria, uh, types of inflammatory markers. And they can get an immunofood allergy test on to try and see how many IgG food um, antigen antibody complexes are made. And uh, we can usually uh, find that if they will avoid those foods um, and then start taking nutrients to heal the gut, drink enough water uh, that the migraines will stop. It, it works, you know, always. I, I'm never going to say a percentage because it always works. It always helps relieve the migraines. Now, another thing is menstruation is an inflammatory time in a woman's uh, monthly cycle. And so every month she has to face an inflammatory phase of a ruptured uh, follicle egg production and uh, the inflammation of that and uh, the time of the shedding of the um, uterine lining. So inflammation is a, a feature a woman has to deal with every month. That inflammation will trigger uh, other low-grade inflammatory actions going on, typically through the gut. Um, so one other thing they could do is uh, if they find, um, if they don't want to do the stool or the immuno or find out their blood type, um, then I would have them go on a carnivore diet for eight weeks, eight full weeks, not one bite of anything outside of a pure carnivore diet, because that's the ultimate elimination, food elimination diet, where they can see uh, if they really feel better. Women often need progesterone, however, day 15 through 25 of their menstrual cycle. And so progesterone is known to uh, help uh, stop uh, and disinflame uh, as well as uh, prevent migraines. Um, systemic enzymes help, helps, uh, exercise helps, uh, adequate hydration helps, and of course, a low carb diet, because high carbs in the diet um, will create uh, moments of high uh, glucose of influx into the blood, triggering inflammation and uh, vascular wall damage. And migraines are a vascular uh, wall damage response in general uh, to the meninges or the membranes that creates the headache. Tiziana says, hi, Dr. Rita, what is the name of the hydrogen water that you use? Thank you. It's called Izumi, I-Z-U-M-I. -I. And uh, let's see. I'm trying to uh, look up. Yeah, here it is. I have a card on Izumi. You can call one, excuse me, 815-601-2480. 815-601-2480. And uh, that's where you can get the Izumi water, questions answered, material, and uh, they can get it ordered for you. Uh, the company that produces Izumi water is Naturally Plus molecular hydrogenated water. Okay, so hopefully that helps them. Um, <clears throat> and then Essie says, if I have to drink alcohol, what is the best one and how much would be maximum day per week? Um, I'm not gonna uh, endorse that. Um, I think alcohol is a toxin. So um, no one has to drink um, alcohol and I wouldn't. What is the best one? There isn't any. How much would be the maximum? Uh, one drop. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm. I don't uh, support taking in a toxin. Uh, and and I think that's that's the argument I'm going to leave it at. Um, if you want to say what get a, gets away from the fermentation and the hops and all the um, yeast and and stuff, grain um, food reactivity and antigens, I would say it would be tequila. Tequila would be the uh, 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 least immunogenic one, although it's a toxic um, alcohol product. And if you put uh, tequila, I think tequila goes into sugary drinks. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, then if you put tequila in a sugary drink, then you're taking a double whammy of damage to your body. So sorry, um, I wouldn't... Uh, use any. 
All right, so I'm going to go to some of my um, questions here. Lena said, I am drinking over half my weight in ounces. I weigh 110 pounds. So she drank 55 ounces of water. She drinks four 20-ounce bottles of water a day. So that's 80. So you're about 35 over what you need. Um, I have a reverse osmosis water filter, but I get leg cramps. Am I deficient in minerals? It sounds like it. I'm 74 years old and good health. Um, I would, you know, my water filter has a remineralization uh, phase to the process, but I still take my TLC multi-minerals so that I don't get leg cramps either. Um, it could be you're drinking too much water. If you're drinking 80 ounces and you're not in a hot uh, yoga or sauna where you're sweating profusely, then I think uh, maybe you're uh, also rinsing away too many of your minerals. Renee says, my 24-year-old brother eats fast food, drinks a lot of soda. Well, there's your marketing and your social uh, pressure of your groups and vapes every day. I am worried about his health. He's quite thin and becomes defensive when anyone tries to talk to him about his poor habits. How can I get through to him so he takes his health and life seriously? Uh, Renee, uh, pray for him, love him, um, and always talk about uh, everything that's wonderful and good about him. Uh, when I'm with my patients, even if they had a bad lab, I am always going to tell them, uh, this part of the lab, I recognize and I praise you for the good outcome of this aspect or uh, your, your, um, your, I say you have a good body or you have everything worth in your life to uh, improve it because uh, people, um, depression is being manufactured through all this uh, corruption of our world uh, system. And true love um, and true support needs to be encouraged. Once your brother really knows that you're always uh, loving on him, uh, then uh, it's easier to take um, some corrective advice. Uh, it's like with my faith, I, I think about Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior dying for my sins. It says, uh, while we were yet sinners, uh, God sent his son to, uh, to die for our sins. So God commended his love for us in anticipation first. And so I was so impressed with that uh, verse that uh, I thought, wow, even before I was and before I sinned, he already paid for it. What love, what unconditional love. So I'm going to say the first recipe is uh, to give uh, really true supportive love messages to him. Then. Uh, maybe give him a YouTube uh, to watch, and I would uh, direct him toward uh, Sugar the Bitter Truth by uh, Dr. Lustig, L-U-S-T-I-G. <coughs> and the reason is Dr. Lustig is so angry about the processed junk food uh, that um, he took a sabbatical, a sabbatical to get a, um, I think his law degree, because he's trying to fight the lobbyists who control uh, the food recommendations, the nutrient uh, recommendations that go into our school, our military, our hospital and educational food systems that are killing us. Foolishness like from Tufts University that puts out a chart uh, that says, uh, Lucky Charms are uh, more nutritious than I think eggs. I mean, how stupid can our pinhead professors be uh, to publish something like that? But you go to Tufts University, recent publications on uh, nutritional recommendations, and you'll see this idiocy uh, being published out there. So you have to understand, Dr. Lustig, um, you know, he and I agree on things, and there's some things we disagree on. But one thing we do agree is uh, there is a planned finance destruction to destroy the health and future, the fertility, the mental acuity uh, of uh, the uh, people through these terrible habits. So Dr. Lustig's, uh, Lustig's uh, video, Sugar the Bitter Truth, uh, he wrote uh, a few books. One is Toxic at Any, well, I just look up his books uh, or give him a book and say with love or maybe pre-read the best chapter there or the whole book and then say, 
please read the, at least this chapter here. And your brother should uh, <clears throat> uh, receive your love. Rhonda says, how do you feel about colonics? I don't uh, see them as useful. More importantly is what you put down this hole than what you put up the other hole. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I don't want to take away any potential benefit. I've received colon hydrotherapy. Uh, I've had several. Um, I wouldn't say it harmed me or anything. There's a potential for harm in anything. You could even drink too much water. But what I'm saying is to put your time and money into colonics or uh, um, coffee enemas, I think would far better be put in uh, learning to save your money and fast. Just don't eat anything and learn to train yourself to fast for 24 hours uh, and then eventually um, 48 hours in a row and then uh, up to three days in a row and do that on a rotating basis. Like I'll do two five-day fasts a year um, I'll do uh, maybe two, three-day fasts a year, and I often do a one-day fast every week. Uh, so that would be far more beneficial, Rhonda. And then she goes on to say, I have a strong tingling in my upper lip and in the gums of my front teeth. Two years ago, I had a root canal in one of these front teeth. What do you think should would be causing this tingling? Thank you so much. Well, I think it's the... Um, metals that were in the root canal. And so you have to go to a biological dentist. You can look that up on the internet, biological dentist uh, near me. These are dentists who have opened their minds and hearts scientifically to the research on heavy metal toxicity, mercury, aluminum, uh, arsenic, cadmium, uh, and uh, lead, and uh, the value of EDTA, chelation uh, therapy, high dose vitamin C therapy, um, getting rid of these root canals and uh, using safer um, non-metal base fillings and, and stuff like that. Uh, so get, see a good biological dentist and get a good functional medical doctor who's familiar with chelation and those risks. Laura says, I was encouraged a week or two ago when I read, you believe there is science behind the X39 patch from LifeWave. That's true. Can you please tell me if these would be safe for me long-term use, given that I am a breast cancer and melanoma sur survivor? Um, these are crystals, and uh, crystals have their own uh, structure uh, uh, atomically, and these atoms with their unique uh, uh, structure uh, have a vibration that your own heat of your body can start magnifying that um, signal then can be associated with benefits uh, to the human body signaling. Uh, everything in our body is electrochemical, absolutely everything. So any good thing you're doing, you could also argue is saying you are electrically, uh, electrochemically um, uh, vibrating better uh, and having a better immune response to viruses, bacterial uh, uh, stress, all these things. So everything is energy. And uh, these uh, patches shouldn't have any negative impact uh, from that to my best understanding of the science at this time. Um, I don't understand the stem cell activation the company speaks of and how that relates to my cancer history. Uh, stem cells uh, from the uh, cancer line uh, uh, is something that we would uh, try and starve out with a very low carb diet with enzymes and with high dose vitamin C uh, intravenous therapy. But stem cells in general, you have to have them all the time to help uh, regenerate skin tissue, uh, your bones, your hair, everything um, has a, uh, a cell that is supportive of the repair and replacement. So uh, don't be afraid of the term stem cells. Um, there's the argument that we're all making cancer stem cells as uh, every day of our lives it's uh, stopping the likelihood of it implanting in a area organ that would uh, be detrimental. Uh, that's one theory. I prefer the mitochondrial metabolic theory of uh, cancer. And so the high carb, lousy processed food, um, inactive, uh, dehydrated uh, 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 lifestyle is gonna promote uh, degenerative energy metabolism and spontaneous uh, uh, 
regression to embryonic uh, developmental states that would grow their own blood vessels in a tumor. So I wouldn't worry about the allura. Uh, Stephen, I believe I have a parasite. It looks like worms. Uh, they very well could be in my kidneys too, uh, because they took a CAT scan and said I had kidney stones in both, but I only have a history of it being on my left. What can I take to get rid of it? I'm currently taking intestine pro off Am Amazon. Thanks. Intestine and pro what, off of Amazon. Thanks. Um, I'm going to tell you, just, you know, get a, a stool for ova and parasites or see a functional doctor who will do a complete digestive stool analysis on you. And we'll find if you do or you don't. Pinworms um, can uh, spread around from uh, various, mostly in children, the classroom. Um, it gets uh, commonly spread around. Uh, the uh, If you have pets, you know, it's very unlikely that you're going to get worms from them. Uh, but go ahead and see your urgent care and give them a stool sample for stool uh, uh, for ova and parasites or a functional doctor who will do a complete digestive stool analysis. I like the one from Doctors Data out of St. Charles, Illinois. Um, it is the oldest, most reliable, first developed complete digestive stool analysis uh, 40, 50 years ago. So it has the best background and history of research. Um, what to take? Well, I don't believe in taking anything until we've proven something because I'm a standard doctor, uh, but do get advice from the local doctor there. Uh, usually these things are pinworms and they uh, usually come and go uh, and are self-limiting often, but sometimes uh, we do treat them uh, with uh, anti-parasitical um, antibiotics. Uh, Barbara says, I'm a TLC patient. My niece, 32, from Mesa, Arizona, took the Pfizer vaccine, no boosters. Within one month, had random fast heartbeats, tight chest, difficulty breathing. She went to urgent care, uh, put her on a D PDN, prednisone. She went to a naturopath and did food allergies. She stopped eggs and alcohol. X-ray showed a three millimeter scar on her chest. What can you recommend? Have you seen this from uh, the VAX? Barbara, that's way too vague for me to really make a statement about it. Um, there are, uh, I am concerned uh, also with you about uh, the injections that she received. Uh, she needs to find a good functional doctor who would be able uh, to tell her about some of the fascinating research on nicotine uh, and using ivermectin and systemic enzyme and chelation therapy, a low carb diet. But it's amazing if you do a research, a uh, Google search, uh, or do a go, duck, duck, go or bing.com uh, search on nicotine, uh, which isn't a carcinogen, it isn't a toxin of itself. Nicotine uh, grows in, uh, what is it growing? Uh, uh, zucchini, uh, butter squash, you know, so nicotine is not bad of itself, but uh, nicotine uh, goes to those ACE receptors and blocks them from being irritated by spike protein. So uh, if the uh, injection that she took is still producing waves of uh, spike protein uh, through the um, uh, ribosomes and her own protein generation in her cells, and that uh, is cycled on and, on and off throughout her life. Um, she can uh, take, I think the research showed three milligrams of nicotine uh, blocked uh, the symptoms of what they called chronic uh, COVID, long COVID symptoms. It's very interesting. Um, if you look at um, the spike protein and the research on uh, venom poisoning on the uh, construct of the spike protein uh, um, snake venom uh, structure is there. One of the um, treatments for that is the, uh, you know, if you ever get a snake bite, you should pee on it. Um, and nicotine uh, is another thing. If you no didn't, I don't know if you noticed this, but almost no smokers really had any significant COVID uh, problems. So anyway, um, I would look at that, um, but Barbara, please 
have or find a uh, time to see a good functional uh, doctor who can school her on these things and look into her symptoms more deeply. Um, Kathy says, hi, Dr. E, is it okay to put bi-estrogen cream on my face? The answer is yes. If so, is there any advantage putting there versus on other parts of the body? Well, it absorbs better, so you can use a smaller amount and you save money and you're, um, you don't need as much cream and it lasts longer. Uh, that's the only advantage, Kathy. I put mine on my face and uh, <clears throat> that's, I don't use a lot of cream, but it certainly works uh, nicely. Uh, Mariella, Mariella, uh, hello, doctor. I have a nail fungus on my two big toes. I tried everything. I went to three professionals. They use laser, all three different laser treatments, and I still can't get rid of them. What else can I try? Thank you for all you do. Mariella, I would have to know what your insulin is. If it's not around three or less, if your fasting blood sugar isn't around 80 or less, if your triglycerides aren't 50 or less, and if your hemoglobin A1C glucose sticking to the protein hemoglobin under 5.2%, uh, then you're always going to be feeding sugar to grow yeast in your toes. So if you're going to change anything, you have to change that first. Um, I would use Argentan silver and put that on your toes uh, every night. Um, and uh, that's the first thing. But nothing's going to help you. Uh, no treatment unless you get your carbohydrate starts. And you're living in a country uh, that is promoting filthy uh, uh, stuff to be consumed. They call it food, but it's toxic, highly processed uh, carbs, fruit, sugars, and filth to harm your immune system so that you uh, promote the growth of fungus and you destroy the protection of the white blood cell uh, immune system. So you have to deal with that fact and fight it. Uh, Dorothy, what are the different causes of urinary tract infections? Well, usually the most common thing is um, as we age, the uh, lining of our urethra and vaginal canal gets thinner and thinner and thinner because we don't have estrogen anymore. And then the tissues can get hurt uh, with trauma if you still have sex, uh, if you uh, <clears throat> have a wipe uh, accidentally, indiscriminately uh, backwards to front, you might bring some fecal uh, bacteria into that area, and it'll have a much easier opportunity to uh, climb up the short, short urethra of a woman's uh, urinary tract system. Um, and that is probably uh, the number one uh, thing. Um, let's see, where are we at? Uh, what are other different causes of urinary tract infections? Well, uh, you have to have your immune system check. If you have an uh, immune problem, <laughs> and almost all people do, eating this lousy, promoted, marketed, social pressured uh, to eat this junk, even in church, it's so disgusting, um, then I would uh, say that everyone is depressing their immune system uh, by eating this way. Those are the main reasons. Uh, Mary, my friend has been taking gabapentin and other pain relievers for years because of severe neuropathy in her feet stemming from an injury. She is experiencing bad side effects and really wants to get off the medication, but the pain is pretty severe. Do you know of any alternative to the gabapentin? I've heard that Jamaican dogwood is good. Uh, I have not heard about that, Mary, but uh, we are designed to heal from micro trauma. Uh, you would have to, um, I would have to understand is there actual uh, nerves, sever, severed nerves. Uh, is it, <coughs> is she a diabetic? Uh, does she have high blood sugars? Is she pre-diabetic? Um, does she have uh, low mineral counts? Uh, what is her heavy metal load? Uh, what is her microcirculation like? What is her vitamin D? What is her essential fatty acid, essential fatty acid levels? <coughs> All these things would matter. Uh, systemic enzymes is the first direction I would go with her. Get her to a functional doctor where she can get uh, microcirculation uh, support through uh, calcium disodium EDT chelation therapy. And uh, we can uh, usually see a nice uh, improvement with that. Uh, natural hormone replacement helps uh, stimulate um, 
tissue thickness and, and a more moist, robust, voluptuous uh, um, tissue uh, domain that will be helpful too. So hopefully those are some ideas to help her with. Um, Carol uh, Sherry says, uh, since you don't think the suppositories work as well as they used to because of the cocoa butter, what do you suggest for ridding myself of heavy metals? If it's chelation IVs, how many do you suggest and how often for it to work? There are they are quite expensive. That is why I started the suppositories. I have quite a lot of metals. Thanks. Thank you. Well, we have found a way uh, to try and help you get that covered uh, through your insurance. So Sherry, uh, give us a call here because things have changed in that venue. Um, and uh, we'd happy to talk to you more about that. Um, <clears throat> but the IV chelation is the number one way we'd want to get a challenge to kind of get a reference base point of how much you're dumping. We typically do about 30 IVs and we repeat that challenge to see the, the reduction in areas and the other ones that are now releasing. And then you might need another set of 30. Um, and then we do a maintenance of about 10 per year thereafter. So that's kind of the approach we take. Carol says, what do you think of red light therapy? If so, what do you think it's best used for? Thank you. Well, it is wavelength therapy, kind of like the uh, life wave um, uh, that was spoken of before. Uh, energy stimulates uh, vasodilation. Vasodilation improves circulation on the microscopic level, which enhances cellular health, which in, uh, extends life repair and longevity. So the uh, wavelength of the red light penetrates uh, uh, a few centimeters, I believe, into the skin and is involved with uh, improved vascularization. And that's the uh, benefit of it, Carol. Harlow says, God bless you, Dr. Rita. You asked me, I watched Dr. Diamond's video on cholesterol and my blood work is on target. The video was so informative. Thank you, Harlow, for watching it and then giving a report back uh, because I try not to waste my time or my patient's time giving you the down low and dirty, down low and dirty of exactly what you need to do. And that's take personal responsibility for your what goes in your mouth, how much water you're drinking, getting a good night's sleep, getting exercise, both weight rate training and aerobic, eating a healthy, real food diet, avoiding that processed food, and um, eating in a time-restricted zone. And uh, that pretty much solves all your medical bills. Diane says, uh, oh, Harlow went on to say, how can calcium calcifications be removed from arteries? Thank you. Well, if there's soft plaque calciums, the uh, vitamin uh, D with K2, um, uh, MK7, uh, like in K-Force or our D10,000 with K2, 90 micrograms, this is how I would do it along with EDTA chelation, a low-carb diet. Uh, eating real food, all these healthy things. So you stop the micro injury that you're doing to these uh, these uh, cell membranes right here so that your body, when it heals it, let me get my finger in there, when it heals it to this healthy side with the fats and proteins you eat in real food, then it won't be damaged. But you got to lower those sugar uh, damage things. Uh, do chelation and that will help you, Harlow. Uh, Deanne says, hi, Dr. Rita. Thanks so much for being there for all of us. Well, thank you, Diane, and all of you for being such wonderful patients. You guys make me look good. Uh, and actually, all the praise goes to our uh, great God and King and Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes all this available. Because if you think I learned this all on my own, I had many people pour into me. And uh, I'm just the result of the wisdom of my forefathers. So she goes on to say, hi, Dr. Rita. Thanks so much for being there for all of us. Your knowledge and experience is invaluable. Well, thank you. Uh, I am B positive blood type and get spring allergies. Also, I deal periodically with bouts of vertigo. Any natural remedies? Thanks so much. Deanne, uh, you got to live the healthy lifestyle. Um, uh, EDT chelation improves the micro uh, circulation damage of aging. Uh, you have to be well hydrated. You have to take systemic enzymes, natural um, antihistamines like uh, quercetin in our seasonal allergy or dehist uh, products. I take all the time because I'm B positive blood too. 
So um, I would um, encourage that. Joyce says, hi, Dr. Elitharp. I'm a 68-year-old A-positive blood type patient at TLC and have heard an earful of horrible experiences from 50-plus-year-old people who came down with shingles. Do you re recommend getting the shingles vaccine at this point in life? No. I have had chickenpox as a youngster, and life stressors are at a minimal level. Well, uh, we, we have an immune system that is designed to keep viruses and things like this under check. High dose vitamin C is very good for fighting off chickenpox varicella. So at the first hint of any uh, viral illness or anything like that, you can come in and do the 25 gram vitamin C drip with us. Stay on your vitamin D and keep the levels above 80. Uh, be on a low carb diet so your, your immune system doesn't get uh, depressed. Uh, be well hydrated, get good sleep. Don't eat late at night so you optimize your healing window of time uh, and exercise regularly. Uh, you know, take a multivitamin uh, with minerals. Um, I use Juice Plus as well. I take iodine. I take systemic enzymes as an anti-inflammatory with my D. And I take quercetin all the time, an antiviral, ionophore. So that's what I would do, Deanna. And then I have vitamin C drips if I need it. Joyce says, hi, Dr. Elithar. Oh, that's the one I just read. Okay. So that's for you, Joyce. Okay. And then the last three questions. Let's see if I can get through it all. Um, Penny says, hi, Dr. Rita. I'm an 84-year-old woman, Dr. Mitchell's patient for years. Generally in good health, follow-up MRI with contrast of liver as compared to 26 MRI with contrast. A few lesions on the liver continue to be described as hemangiomas, that sounds benign, and several renal cysts called simple cysts, that sounds benign. However, liver is enlarged 20 centimeters and grew five centimeters since 2016. Well, I, I'm going to suggest, Penny, that that might be fatty liver. Uh, you, you need to look at your fasting blood sugar, triglyceride, fasting insulin, and hemoglobin A1C, and uh, see if there was any uh, reference to non-alcoholic fatty liver uh, uh, in the report. Discuss it with your doctor. Um, systemic enzymes would be valuable doing um, intermittent fasting, uh, doing exercise, all these things will help improve all those sugar numbers and stay away from all juicing and juice uh, from fruits because high fructose and fructose itself, uh, any source will aggravate liver uh, uh, disease and of course no alcohol. Penny goes on, regarding the liver that grew five centimeters, what is the reason for growth? I already mentioned it's likely uh, the fructose. Um, my integrative MD is not concerned. My blood work is good. I eat pretty clean, high protein, good fats, low carb exercise. Uh, starting to take milk thistle for liver detox. Any suggestion? Thanks as always. Um, I'm not against milk thistle, but I think lipoic acid is the absolute number one liver detox uh, supportive um, item. So taking... Um, Alpha lipoic acid, ALA, uh, 500 milligrams twice a day, being very low carb, no fruit sugar at all, no alcohol, and uh, exercise. And then uh, just do an ultrasound uh, of your liver to track that so you don't have to do the MRIs. Uh, Leslie says, will the EDTA IV treatments remove lead? Absolutely. That is what it received FDA approval for in the 1950s, early 60s, for children for the removal of lead from uh, lead uh, accidental toxicity from chewing lead-based paint on cribs and windowsills and stuff. Yes. Joanna says, hi, I'm 60 years old. My hands tend to go numb at night when I'm sleeping. I do have some pain, mostly the thumb joint. I have not been able to get my wedding ring on for the last four months. Is there something that can be done for this? I do not eat processed foods or sugar. I do not seem to have inflammation anywhere else in my body. Um, we're all aging. We're all losing our muscle mass with aging. So past the age of 40, our muscle tone diminishes. So our structure of sitting and our tone for how we hold our shoulders up, 
and everything, we're starting to slump forward like this with aging. And with that, these tiny little lumbricoidy muscles between our spine are diminished so that even when we sleep at night, the angle of pinching can be exacerbated. Therefore, I would do um, muscle weight training twice a week minimum for about a half an hour, upper and lower in body. And then uh, unless your blood sugar is under 85, uh, insulin under th three, uh, fat, uh, triglycerides 50 or less, hemoglobin A1C 5.2. Those are the only lab levels that I consider truly healthy and um, anti-inflammatory. Then I would take systemic enzymes like Vitalzyme or Vascuzyme systemic enzymes on an empty stomach twice a day, uh, maybe four or five. And then I would do EDT chelation therapy to improve microcirculation. Do all that together and uh, uh, see your good uh, uh, doctor, a uh, functional doctor to help supervise and manage that for you. And uh, that should be able to help you, uh, Joanna, um, as well. And then we can do HSCRP and SED rate and get those labs. So I got through all these here. It's now 701. I need to bring this to an end. Uh, Essie is so sweet. She said, I'm looking cute and fabulous. Well, bless your heart. Um, Carolyn says, what do you make of the recent news report that excess niacin can cause heart disease? And one article showed a refrigerator case full of meat under the headline. You know, I, I just think that this is uh, uh, fear mongering. I've been in the business uh, of medicine over 43 years. I've been using uh, nutraceuticals um, and what is typically re regarded as higher dosing. So of all these vitamins, I've never seen anything but benefit. Um, if you get it, take niacin up to the level of, I think, 300 milligrams. Um, yes, uh, I think there are some side effects that are, are uh, uh, not, are, that are harmful. Um, but in general, most people don't, unless they are absolutely overdosing on niacin isolatedly. Joanne says, amen, Dr. Rita. Okay, amen. All glory to God. T uh, says, can you say what's in the start for an edit, edit can you say w's in the i i don't know how what you're saying there so i'm sorry and barbara says thank you so with that i'll say good night to everyone god bless you um and uh <clears throat> we have to uh, uh understand that we are um in this container i'm in a female container and I am trying to live my life uh, to bring glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by all that I do. And I want to be pleasing to God every day of my life. And, and that means I want to ask God, what does he want me to eat? Does he want me to exercise? Should I drink that water? Should I say no to that offered treat? And, and this is how I try and live. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I fail it. But I want to tell you, it's a struggle for me. Um, I, I don't want to be hypocritical. Um, but if we all encourage each other to do the best we can and love each other through it and compliment anything we can that is beautiful and lovely about ourselves and our friends and family, and then bring glory to him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Have a good night. Take care.